Politics now and Theresa May has already been warned this year that a party faces losing control of several London councils at the local elections in May. But one she would still have been expecting to hold on to is Barnet, the North London borough that contains the constituency once represented by one Margaret Thatcher. Yet, even there, some pollsters are predicting a Labour win over the Tories. Here's our political correspondent, Simon Harris. Margaret Hilda Thatcher, Conservative, 20,000... 918. When Margaret Thatcher became Britain's first woman Prime Minister in 1979, the voters of Finchley returned her to Parliament with a healthy majority of almost 8,000. Fast forward almost 40 years and this once safe Conservative seat is now a Tory marginal and the local council Barnet will be at the top of Labour's London hit list in May. But Barnet might not be a walkover. There is to worry about uh, Labour being seen as anti-Semitic. Barnet's outer London suburbs include Finchley and Golders Green. Many Jewish voters are deeply suspicious of Labour under Jeremy Corbyn. So Labour councillors are on a mission to win hearts and minds ahead of the elections. We put forward that Barnet should follow the uh, Holocaust Education Trust definition of anti-Semitism. One of our candidates is a rabbi. The Tories have been in charge here for 16 years, but their control of Barnet hangs by a thread. The party has a majority of just one. The decision to outsource some services to the private firm Capita has been particularly controversial. Not that the current council leader is ready to concede defeat. The services are good. By and large, they're good. I mean, there are obviously, there are always cock-ups in every organisation and we have our share, but it's a question of how you deal with them and how you put them right. And I think we've been a successful council giving people good value for the money they spend. When Margaret Thatcher was Prime Minister, the idea of her local council being controlled by Labour was unthinkable. But even she had reservations about the way the town hall was run. Well, Mrs Thatcher was never a great fan of Conservative-controlled Barnet. Even in the Conservative heydays, she always thought there were cuts to be made and the council tax and the rates in her day were too high. Losing Barnet would be a blow to Theresa May. But the Conservatives are bracing themselves for even worse. Perhaps half of their nine London boroughs could change hands. And Simon, you'll have more on the local elections tonight on The Late Debate with um, Harriet Harman talking equality 100 years on from women getting the vote. Yes, Nina, Harriet Harman is a former women's minister. 36 years ago, she fought the Peckham by-election while she was pregnant with her first child. I'll be asking her about sleaze in Parliament, women's pay, and what stopped her joining the contest to be party leader. I felt as deputy it did fall to me to try and pick up the pieces after we'd lost the election. And the same happened in, in 2015. So in a way, I was the one that was picking up the pieces rather than building for the future. Was but, it a mistake? Um, well, you know, I just did what I thought was right at the time. And it's no point looking back and thinking if only. Who knows? I think if I'd have stood for election, I probably would have won it. But who knows? I might have made a hash of it. Nina, did you know the rules which forced the BBC to reveal its gender pay, cap, pay gap will soon apply to big private companies? That's another of the topics we'll be covering on The Late Debate tonight here on ITV at 10.45. Simon, thank you. The costly collapse of the construction firm Carillion this week has not only put thousands of jobs at risk, but also called into the question the role private companies play in the public sector. Today, it was the Labour Mayor of London's plan to sell off the capital's newest fleet of trains that came under scrutiny. Sadiq Khan wants to free up cash for other transport projects, and so TfL would effectively rent the trains it currently owns. His opponents have said his plan is quite mad, as our political correspondent Simon Harris now reports. It's London's new £1 billion train set and it could soon be up for sale. These state-of-the-art commuter trains are being built for Crossrail, which opens as the Elizabeth Line next year. But now Transport for London is looking to sell off the entire fleet and then lease it back to raise much-needed cash. Behind this is a real shift in decision-making and policy from Transport for London to lease um, their assets rather than own them wholly. What else is going to be leased out next? We need to get to the bottom of this and really understand the terms of this lease and what the cost is to Londoners. It just smacks of desperation. It looks as though, you know, we're in hock-up to our necks. Uh, we can't really borrow any more money, so what, what do we do? We start selling off the family silver. 
Transport for London is buying 70 new trains for the Elizabeth line, but it also needs to raise £875 million so it can place a further order for new Piccadilly line trains. City Hall is never normally shy about trumpeting the Mayor's big ideas, but on this occasion there was no announcement, just an obscure line in a budget document. Leasing has become common practice on Britain's railways since privatisation. But the collapse of the construction firm Carillion this week turned the spotlight on the relationship between the private sector and public bodies. The mayor insisted today the Elizabeth Line deal is not a private finance initiative, a so-called PFI, although one expert questioned that interpretation. I think it follows the same logic, it corresponds to the same logic as a PFI initiative in the sense that you get money up front um, uh, but in the long term you end up paying, all, paying back a, a lot more and incurring r risks as a result. Would you call it a PFI? I would call it a PFI. This is not uh, a PFI, this is on the Elizabeth line, a consideration of whether we it buy... Sounds like a PFI. Back. No, it's not a PFI. I mean, it's a million miles away from a PFI. It's similar to a mortgage. Uh, so it's not a credit card, it's a mortgage uh, type scheme where you buy something in the long term uh, and you're paying back low rates of interest. The rates are actually very, very low. But details of the possible sale and lease back haven't been made public and the secrecy makes the Mayor's opponents suspicious. Simon Harris, ITV News, City Hall. Next tonight, Sadiq Khan was accused today of failing to reassure young black Londoners about the use of stop and search tactics by police. The mayor announced last week there would be a significant increase in its use following a series of stabbings in the capital. But when questioned about it this morning, he wouldn't give assurances that young black men would not be unfairly targeted. With more, here's our political correspondent, Simon Harris. Stephen and Taz aren't regular viewers of the Mayor's monthly question and answer session at City Hall, but today was different. Sadiq Khan was being asked about stop and search. Stephen and Taz are involved with an urban youth charity and they wanted to hear the Mayor's views. Like he's explaining stop and search so and look, much but he's not answering, answering the question. question. Mr Mayor, can you guarantee young black men in London will not be targeted? Um, excessively by the police. Six out of ten victims of knife crime deaths are young black Asian minority ethnic Londoners. And what these communities are saying to me and to the Commissioner <coughs> is we want an increased police presence in our communities. Are you going to guarantee young black Londoners they will not be targeted? I'm saying target-led, intelligence-based, with a body-worn video. Mr Mayor, I've asked you the question four times and you've, you've not answered. Do you want me to ask you one more time to give you an opportunity to actually answer the question? I want to reassure Londoners that there will be increased police activity to target uh, knife crime and those carrying So you're not going to answer the question? I don't, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think we're making any progress. I take that as a no, Mayor. As things currently stand, I'm the Mayor, not you. It's for me to answer the questions how I would ask them. In 2016, there were 60 fatal stabbings in London. Last year, that rose to 80, up a third. Less than three weeks into 2018, four people have already been stabbed to death. The Mayor's response to the surge in knife crime is to order a significant increase in the use of stop and search. But that worries young men like Stephen and Taz, and they didn't hear anything from Mr Khan today to reassure them. It was really hard to watch because it's a simple question at the end of the day, he's asking them, and the Mayor's kind of trying to ask other questions to try and avoid the, the main question, and I just think it's a, it's, a, it's a very simple thing to answer, it's a yes or no question. Are you reassured that police officers now have body-worn cameras? That wouldn't, that's not going to stop someone from being targeted. Do you know what I mean? That's not going to stop a young person from being pro, um, racially profiled. So, yes, it's good when, if the officer hasn't done his job properly, but that's not going to, that's not the, do you know what I mean? That's not going to stop a young person from being targeted. Stop and search might be the answer but it's a tactic which leaves many Londoners feeling uneasy. Simon Harris, ITV News, Woolworth.